<laughs> Welcome everyone back to another video here on the Carbo Guy channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Epson Powerlight 430. I got this projector off of eBay last Friday. The a review I did on the S5 yesterday. Um, it's very different. It's a very different projector than the other one. It's got way more inputs and it's just a totally different projector. What makes this projector special? It is, is a short throw projector. Well, let's look at the lens. Boom, look at that huge lens, everyone. This projector weighs about um, 12 pounds, but what I can say is it's big, but um, fine. So uh, let's look at the inputs first. Um, we're gonna start off at the back here. So let's start with the inputs. Right at first, of course, we have HDMI, and this projector does have speakers, very nice ones too. Um, HDMI, we have RS-232C, um, very old output, but it still supports it. It's video for um, cable boxes and stuff. Um, then AV for DVD players and all that other good stuff. Monitor out for monitors, computer one, VGA, VGA one, VGA two. So you can have two VGA outputs, one for a computer, one for a monitor. It doesn't really matter. This projector has a lot of inputs. Audio one for uh, VGA one output, meaning like audio into the projector for VGA one. VGA two, it just got separate audio outs because that's just how it works. And then mic, um, that's basically just, I really don't even know what mic is for. I don't understand why it's even there. And then audio out for when you want to just take the audio out for HDMI. And I guess for the rest of the projector, just the whole audio that the projector is playing now goes on into uh, speakers or something, audio out. And then over here we have type B, uh, USB B, they call it as a type B, USB B. Um, and this is for, uh, I think this is for another display. This is for display as well. And then type A, and then LAN for like, since this projector actually supports like display, like presentations and stuff, you can literally just plug it into the internet. And then what'll happen is you can use your phone to like use, manage, you can like use your phone to control the projector. And you can like put presentations on the projector without having to plug in anything of this. And then at the bottom here, of course, is the power cable. And then right here is, it just it has an internet sign. And I really haven't really, I think this is just something like that. I really don't know anything. But it supports internet, so that's pretty cool. And then there's the speaker right there. Pretty nice speaker. On the front here is, oh wait, my bad. This is the filter right here. My bad, I screwed that up. This is the filter this side. This is the just regular um, heat emitters on the side. And on the back here, okay, on the back, this is uh, Keystone slash um, making the projector higher basically like the s5 but i haven't used this yet actually i haven't had to use it because it's one of those short throw protectors i'm gonna explain everything to you later but we don't haven't had to use that yet here's the mounting holes one it's got a lot two three four five it's got a lot and then some more keystone i just thought they did come out but they're for uh adjusting like the keystone some more keystone options making the projector more even but i'm just gonna leave that by default all screwed in so it doesn't get messed up. Now I'm gonna explain to you the buttons and let's get turning this baby on and just showing you guys the distance and everything. Okay, so the buttons, these are the only buttons, very small. And then there's some uh, lights here, power on, lamp. Again, I explained that on the S5. Lamp, um, when your lamp hours are too low um, and temperature, if your, te if your projector gets uh, too hot, I guess. I really don't know why it would get too hot. I guess it's because um, maybe the projector is working too hot or something. And then here's some error if you really care about it then you can see that if your sticker broke off, I'm more than happy to show you guys this. You can look at that. And then uh, another warning right here. I just like to show everyone the warnings just in case if they wanna know about it. Now let's get right into the specs here. So this is just the power on the projector. Nice orange button. I don't know why it's orange. I guess they transitioned it. So what's funny is on the 400 uh, power light versions, they actually have an orange power button. But on the uh, 500 power light series, they have a blue, yeah, blue power button. That's really funny. Next, source search. Um, so source search lets you, um, when you're plugging in something, there's a lot of input out, uh, inputs here. Let's say you plug something in and you're on the wrong input. All you have to do is click source search. It'll automatically get to the input without, it, without you having to switch to it and screwing it up or something. Next is the menu. You can get into the menu. Just click the menu. And there's a lot of inputs to do there. Next is wide and telly. You can use wide and telly to make the image on your screen bigger or smaller. Next is something called HV. HV is basically something called quick corner, which allows you to select corners on your projector screen. I'll explain it all to you later. It's kind of hard to explain right now, but um, it basically allows you to really adjust the projector image more than just having to move it left and right and up and down. You can wide and telly also makes it really easy. 
Next, next is ask to get out of the menu, get out of uh, certain things, and help if you need help. So, now let's get this puppy powered on and see what it's capable of. For many monitors, as well as um, computers, tower computers. And you should be able to have this in your house as well. Once you plug it in, you should see that on the uh, igniter light, you have a orange light. If you have anything else, your projector might need some attention. Next, take your HDMI cable or VGA cable. Or if you have a VGA cable, you can plug it into computer one or computer two. But if you have an HDMI, you're going to connect it to HDMI right here. And I have noticed that on the projector, this projector, um, so for some reason, the HDMI cable likes to act up a lot. Not to say HDMI cable, but the HDMI output likes to act up. And it won't, like, display an image. And, and of course, we're going to be watching Mr. Beast again because that's what I did on my other projector just to compare it. Next, when I turn the projector on, you should hear a noise. And it should start blinking green, and the uh, projector should start turning on. And it is a very loud projector, but the loudness becomes less loud once you're displaying your image. And this projector is called a short throw projector, so look how close it is to the uh, my uh, screen. And it's just displaying a huge image. It's so huge. I wish I could kind of explain to you how close this is, because it's just too close. Let me go ahead and out of here. Okay, that's more like it. That's how close this thing is. My room is very small, but this is how close the projector is to the screen. I just wanted to make that clear. A very, very awesome projector. And this isn't even like how big it can get. Let me just, it's not even on a good as aspect, aspect ratio, so I'm gonna change that. So to get into the menu, I'm just gonna explain this to you. We're gonna use the menu option. And we can use the buttons down and up to go down. And the volume and the menu up buttons to go up. And let me say, I need mean to go into the setting or signal options. And to get into a certain menu, you're going to click the enter button. And to get into the aspect or whatever else you want to do, select the enter button again. And select your aspect ratio. And to get out of the menu, you can select ESC or menu, both work. I, I select ESC. All right, now we are viewing a whole projector screen. It's way too close to the screen. And it's producing a lot bigger of an image than most, if not all, projectors do. To adjust the focus, you're going to need to use this. You push it to the left or to the right, as you can see. I'm doing this. And the image is getting better or worse, as you can see. There we go. Now that looks like an excellent image. Next, we're gonna be explaining everything. Let's say I was in another input. Let me just purposely go into computer one. Uh, this is not letting me go into computer one. Okay, let me go into another input. How can I do that? Well, let's say you were in another input. All you wanna, all you wanna do is select source search and it'll automatically go into another source. Um, for example, HDMI. Okay, now we're gonna demonstrate um, wide and telly. So, for example, right now, if I select wide, this is the big C image can go. If I select telly by and hold it, um, it'll make the image smaller, and it does make it a lot smaller, way smaller. And you're going to adjust the focus as well. And then, if you want to go back to wide, you're going to hold wide. But since I want to demonstrate how big this image can get, I'm going to go all the way to wide just so I can demonstrate that very nicely. Okay, so get out of there. You select desk. And that's wide and telly. Now I'm going to be introducing to you HV. To enter HV, you're going to select the top button. And once you select the top button, you should see this. It's called quick corner. And just to get into it. So what happens is when you select a corner, you can adjust that corner, this corner, and adjust the image to your leisure. For example, if I wanted to, uh, that to fit a certain screen, I was just going to hit the enter button. And I can go ahead and adjust the image. Look how cool that is, guys. And if I want to adjust another one, I can go and... Select that and use the arrow keys to push where I want it to go. So I want it to go right, so I'm going to select the right arrow key and it'll go right. And I have to select this area if I want to bring this area in more. I'm going to select the button where I want it to go. I want to go to the left, so I'm going to press the left wide button and push it all the way in. This is the most it can go, obviously. I'm just putting, I'm just explaining to you. And then since we're going to select the top now, we're going to push it to the left. We're going to select the wide button and it's going to be pushed to the left. And of course, it looks like a piece of garbage now. But this projector is like so advanced that I can probably make it look good anyway. 
You should see that the image is altered again. Next, you're going to push it all the way to the right to make your image more adjustable again, like we did before. We'll just alter, we're just altering it back to what we had before because it looks like a bad image. And this is what basically a quick corner is. I actually demonstrated this. Hitachi has something similar. Next, we're going to adjust this image here. Uh, more to the left. And that's it. It's fully adjustable now. And we demonstrated to you all these buttons. Next, we're going to select the help option if you need help. And, of course, we can select, an, uh, select a uh, problem. For example, I'm going to select there's no audio. And we can adjust the volume. Okay. So now it's time to look at the projector in real time and how it looks. And we're going to select, uh, we're going to look at um, how big the image can get and what it looks like when it's mounted. Your volume right now is at 5%. I'm just going to, or 5 volume, I'm going to. This is $1 million in cash. Now I'm going to give random people one minute. And it's only 5 volume. That's why it's not that loud. Carl, start the timer. You guys have 60 seconds. Whatever you put in this part. A very awesome image. $1 million. Starting out. Let's go. go. This been 6 seconds. Oh, that's a big TV for our Let's move more TV. It's almost been a minute. It's almost been a minute. That lens is doing an awesome job. As you can see, the projector is flat, okay. like that. It and it's going up. On the dot, no extra time. It is good, Laura. I told these guys I picked. So, that image is awesome right there. And it's just an, a superb projector. And... Last but not least, what you guys were all waiting for, how big the image is and how big it is when it's mounted. All right, guys, so this is the best it can be. I tried my whole way to try to get this to work, but now I guess it's working because my camera is working. So this projector is about maybe one, yeah, about one foot away from the screen, and the image is almost, uh, 50 inch, no, not even, like, almost the size of a 65 inch TV. It's like, a big image. So now let's say your projector is mounted into the classroom. So I'm gonna lift the projector up, because I'm gonna rec replicate to you guys how big this image can actually get. So let's say it was mounted like this. That's a pretty nice image. Let's say we got higher. That image is about, maybe, a foot away from the screen at most and it's producing a pretty big image and if you guys could see this if it was mounted but that image is probably around i don't know it's a really big image and let's just say i wanted to put it closer i can i can make the projector smaller but what i can do is i can almost <laughs> replicate to you it's a big image so if you're thinking about lines and mounting this or something, you're on the right track because this image is just absolutely huge and I would definitely recommend this to anyone who wants it. Now this projector can be around a hundred bucks. I got this for a hundred a hundred dollars. So here it is. The Epson Powerlight 430. Peace out, y'all.